So last week, my wife was booking our family vacation. Interesting that Diane happened to bring that up as a table topic. So I'm sorry, the uh, Toastmaster uh, theme. So she called the travel agent. Sat on the phone with the travel agent for about 20 minutes, giving the number of children, where we want to go, the dates, that sort of thing. And then spent about another 30 minutes on the phone getting information. Said, okay, well, I've got to talk to my husband. I'll get back to you. Great. So we talked, I had a few other questions, so she called in again. Yeah. And she called in, the lady says, well, what's your name? How many kids? She said, wait, wait, I called yesterday. I gave you all this, okay? Oh, well, I'm sorry. You know, we don't capture that. You're gonna have to tell me again. Really? <laughs> okay, you can see that this is a perfect place for our business process improvement. Now, fortunately, Verizon, as many companies do, is looking to improve the processes. We've got a group here called the Verizon Lean Six Sigma group, which I'm part of. And we go through and look at various processes and try to improve both internal and external processes. What I'm going to speak to you about is some best practices and some methods that we use to do this. Now we... Oh, God. <laughs> we use three primary techniques to analyze and understand the business process challenges. Now, not to get into some of the details of these, but you can see there's a value stream map. And the value stream map has process steps. And what this does is help you to focus on non-value at a time, which is basically things that employees are doing that really don't, they don't need to be doing. It doesn't really add value. It focuses on rework with things that we're doing over and over again, failures or things of that nature. We also use the reporting metrics. Now, reporting metrics help us to uh, identify some of the key performance indicators. Things like untimely delivery of service, untimely resolution of tickets, things of that nature, cycle time, how long does it take to do things? So that helps us point to the specific areas in our process that we want to focus on. Now the latest piece uh, and tool in our arsenal is a journey map, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. The journey map is a tool that helps us to understand our customer and the journey they go through. When the customer interacts, it's, it's basically a journey. If you were to go to Verizon Wireless and buy a phone, it's a journey. You go into the store, you look at the phones, you talk to the rep, you make the purchase, you sign the contract. So all that's a journey. And the idea here is that the journey map is a graphical representation of that. So let's take a closer look at a journey map. Now the first thing you can see here, this is an example using repair. So on my journey map, we're talking about a customer that is doing a repair, entering a repair ticket. Okay. You notice across the top, we have stages. And the stages basically go take us through the path that the customer is going to take. Okay? It's really trying to illustrate from left to right, talking about the different things that this customer has to do. Now the next item to call out, you can see, is there's like post-its. And what the post-it is, captures the customer's sentiment during this. Now an important thing to note when we're with, with the, uh, the verbiage in the post-it is, these aren't process steps. So you're not going to find something that says, customer signed a contract. But instead, it's the feeling. You want to know what is the customer feeling during this step. So you'll put something in this box like, customer was confused when he signed the contract. And therefore, we can get a better feel for the emotions of the customer. Now what we do is we take this and we put it on this graph, uh, basically on a, a vertical scale in the sense of high or low. You can see that the arrows to the left indicate the customer sentiment, so that's their satisfaction level. If it's above the midline, they're happy or glad and, and uh, happy with the process. Below the midline is, is a detractor and looks like it needs improvement. Now something else to note, there's various dots along the way. There's various colors, so if you look at the legend on the upper right, the blue dots are essentially things that the customer's doing but are not interacting with our company, with Verizon. The green dots, they're actually talking to someone at Verizon, so we actually maybe have some control over what happens there. And the red cross, something I want to call your attention to, is a moment of truth. Moment of truth are special events where we really need to focus on. This is something that we might not win the business on, but we could definitely lose it if we blow this point. So the way we created this journey map was to meet with internal folks at Verizon basically uh, leaders, leadership that was in the call centers, listening to their reps saying, you know, getting feedback, understanding what's coming back from the field, what, what are they hearing, what's good, what's bad, uh, what can we improve on, and we basically mapped the journey. So for this example, we, we put this map together. 
But then what we needed to do was really to get the true voice of the customer, because that's what really counts. So to do that, if you look at this picture, going from the top to the bottom, top uh, cycling around clockwise, essentially we've got the journey map that we created. And what this did was it fed a call script. We took information from that journey map that we had learned from our internal reps and developed an Excel spreadsheet, questions that we could use for interviews. These questions would help us to, one, run the interview process when we're talking to the customer, and two, make sure that our different uh, callers would be consistent in their questioning and their answers. Next was uh, the idea of identifying customers. So for us, we wanted to know how they felt about the ordering process. So we chose customers that had just recently placed an order. And once we had done that, we picked a team, about 10 uh, black belts, each gave them about 20 calls to make, and they made the calls. Now, once the calls were complete, we compiled the results. We put that together and put them in groupings, and then developed what's called a heat map. And the heat map you can see in the lower left of the screen which is essentially each customer and their question and some sort of a rating, a color rating. And that gives you a nice visual to look at it to see what your map looks like, where your problem areas are. And then once we were done with that heat map, we went back, took that journey map that we had created with internal folks and actually updated it with the true voice of the customer. All right, so what did we learn from this? What were the benefits? Well, I can tell you that we've got a, a customer experience group and that customer experience group was able to use our results, our map, and our interview questions and answers to help them focus on their goal in improving the customer experience within Verizon. My group, the VLSS, we launched a number of projects that span across the entire medium business segment. And what we're doing is we're focusing on areas of like self-serve automation, <coughs> excuse me, cycle time improvements, <coughs> and um, also uh, reducing ticket volumes. Finally, we also uh, impacted the portal. We basically gave them enhancement ideas, and we also proved or validated some of the things that they had in flight, some uh, changes that they were already putting in. Now, as far as key takeaways for you, these are kind of our lessons learned. The first one is have a dialogue with the customer. You get surveys, you get results, you get different information. That's great, but going directly to the customer and having an interview is key. That's the important thing where you, it paints a new picture for you. Next, understand the customer segmentation. So for us, we have a medium business customer. In medium business, the customer's called into a center, so they don't have the same rep every time. In enterprise, one rep is assigned multiple customers, so they'll call out, basically have a, a direct relationship. So know your customer because, and know your customer segment because it's important when you're driving your line of questioning. Design a call script to practice, but don't overdo it. It's definitely important to have something in mind, but be flexible. If you want to talk to the customer and just go ahead and do it, make the phone calls. Keep it fresh. You've got this journey map, you've done the cycle, you need to make sure you repeat this. You make process changes, you want to go back and repeat it to make sure you're on the right track. And finally, keep it simple. You can complicated with bringing in the, the Verizon survey team. You could send out glossy letters to the customers trying to ask for things. Basically just make the phone calls. What we found was that customers were really, really excited to hear that somebody cared about improving the process for them. Now I think our best practice is really important in that it introduces a new dimension to how we analyze processes. The important thing here is that it brings a focus to what's important to Verizon, and that is making Verizon the easiest company to do business with. So I'll open it up now for questions. Do we have any questions? <coughs> what was the legend of your heat map? The legend of the heat map? Mm -hmm. Essentially, the heat map, the colors are really what tells you the customer sentiment. So if you looked at that just graphically, you saw a lot of red. Mm -hmm. We've got unhappy uh, results on certain questions. You could also look column-wise and say, hey, if I see the stack of, of red, this certain question is basically what we need to focus on, what's bad. So really, it kind of brings your eyes to graphically 
to, to where we need to focus and look at because of what it is taking. I think you had three colors, green, probably, red, and something else. Probably green, red, and yellow, right? What was the yellow? So essentially what we have are promoters, detractors, and neutral. So if someone's either happy about something, they essentially don't care about it, or they're extremely unhappy. And so it puts it in that type of category. Yes? While you talk about the segment of customer, um, is there any heat map or something in the similar which talks within the segment, how this customer is compared to the rest of their same segment customer? Right. Well, good question because the important thing with the journey mapping and what we did was trying to focus the scope small enough where it's applicable. Because now even if I take the medium business segment, we could have customers that are of small medium business to where this guy wants to run a hamburger stand and does not care about technology. Meanwhile, you could have medium business customers that are large that have actually a department that's the IT department. So now what we're talking about here is segmentation within the segment of medium business to say that, okay, we now need to look at the technical savviness of these customers, and now how do we appear? Okay, we look like we're really good with the technical guys, but you know when it comes to non-technical folks, we need to better ourselves, and then we can then look at our improvements. So you can definitely develop a heat map, based on where your focus is, you can drill down on it. Well, my second question, just to follow up on that, mm -hmm. is it's more certain segment, like financial sector, if you look at it, they don't complain too much. They just want, it's not their business, they want to focus on money. So there's always a good map you're gonna get it from there. But there are certain customers, you know, segment, no matter what you do, they're gonna complain. So you, you're gonna compare with them. Like uh, whether the way this is stand, that's where you know I think something similar to that might help. Right. Probably what's important though, if you think about it, you're usually catering towards at least a certain market, a certain customer. I mean, our vertical. You know, and I think what you're saying is for Verizon Services, we actually serve many verticals, yes. and so maybe it's one vertical versus another. Yeah. I mean, that's another way to step out. So I think what you're doing is just changing the level of scope. So you're now looking at verticals where we're just saying all the medium business, and uh, it's important to do. Usually what we end up doing is trying to look at, let's say a specific question, right? So as Dawn asked, well, what's the, what's the use and then the uh, scale or the, the legend? So if I found a certain question, do all verticals have this step? And then, you know, you would think that even if the financial people aren't complaining about it, we still need to look at this. So, you know, definitely a good point though. Thank you. Anybody else? And I think we might be running out of time, but. Uh, Can we start the evaluation part of Sure. Well, Ken's ready to just uh, pounce. No, just Can you go back to your previous slide?